you ever feel like you're not getting anywhere with your practice? That can just be so frustrating. It can make you feel like stopping. And that's not good because you love the violin. Because you're playing the same practice routine over and over and it just doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. <sighs> that can happen, you know, everyone hits a wall every now and then or... And, and sometimes that's actually where people stop practicing for a while or even give up for some time. And that's kind of sad because the violin and other stringed instruments are just really beautiful and they can really help you. So I have a simple solution for that and that's to get back into the joy of playing. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is to play too easy for your level. Let me explain. So it's about finding pieces of music that you can play well, that you might already know, pieces of music that or, or improvisations that you do yourself that are fairly easy to do, but sound really good, or you just find something that's fairly easy anyway. That'll allow you to actually start playing music again. So what I mean by that is that, that rather than focusing on just getting those notes exactly right and playing it over and over again until it drives you totally crazy, you just play something that's easy and that's a lot more beautiful and that you can make a lot more beautiful. Let me show you. I mean, one example was what I was playing before. It's, it's kind of simple. For me, it's kind of simple. For some people, it might be harder. But, um, but it allows me to just enjoy playing and just enjoy listening and, and maybe trying to tweak what I'm playing. There's some really easy double stops, especially once it start with a G and D. So they're quite often G major or G minor. Oh, what's something else? Um, oh yeah, I like just simple melodies. And it's, it's, it's a melody I really like. That's uh, Summertime by Gershwin. And, and I've just sort of tweaked around with it and and just kind of made it my own. And, and I actually just play it for joy, just to, to hear myself play, to maybe put a lot of emotion into, into it, like as much emotion as I can. And, and so what I mean by playing too easy is you get a piece that's fairly easy for you to play, but then you just focus on the emotion, like focus what you want to express with the music. And that can be so much fun, like it, it, because you're pouring out your heart into the instrument and, uh, and it, it can take that monotony from playing. And so if you find yourself a bit stuck or caught, or if you just want to get more joy of playing, this is something you can do. You can just pick a piece and put all your heart into it and uh, it becomes a lot more fun. Uh, there's another thing too, is if, if you find a piece that's a little bit hard, a little bit too hard, and you wanna get really good at it, follow Nemanja Radulovic's advice. <laughs> had a really good secret and and so what he does so he can play his so he can do his concerts really well he actually learns pieces way too fast i would practice like um, much faster yes, than yeah i should play just to, to get the the big line so he plays them like when he practices them he plays them a lot faster than he's actually going to perform them and because he can play them in tune faster, when he actually gets to the performance, he can slow it down and really put the emotion into the playing. And that's so important. So here are some of my suggestions to put some emotion into your playing and really make it fun. So one is really put your heart into it. 
and you know really think of an emotion you're trying to express and put your heart into it the second one is just close your eyes while you're playing so you can kind of you know you, you can go deeper into the piece that you're playing the third one is just enjoy listening while you're playing so listen to yourself it's almost like you're doing a performance for yourself an audience of one so another thing you can do um, which is the fourth thing is to really focus on the tone like how can you how can you play it differently how can you put a different tone into the piece uh, because the piece is quite easy that you're going to play you can play around with the tone and the kind of sound that you make and the fifth thing you can do is just record yourself you might get a bit shocked you know so first time you listen to <laughs> first time you listen to yourself it can sound terrible like uh, quite often hearing yourself you think oh Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I sound pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually pretty good at this. And uh, and then then you kind of hear yourself and you go, hmm, that sounds out of tune and terrible. But uh, persist. Do it again and then again because it can allow you to actually play a lot better. I used to play really timidly and uh, I don't know why. I don't know if it was a confidence thing or maybe I just didn't want to get on people's nerves or something. You know, I just played a bit quietly and then one day I just started like really ripping into the instrument. You know, playing quiet has its place in music, but um, but when you really play into an instrument, you, you, you get so much more out of the sound. So, you know, I used to play... Yeah, it was definitely a confidence thing. I, I remember my sister commenting on it. And she goes, well, you know, it actually sounds quite nice what you're doing, but because uh, we, I did a lot of improvising with her, but you yeah, just say so quiet, I can't hear you. So, uh, so now I just go for it, you know, and, and it mightn't always fit, but you know, but you, you can actually get something different out of the instrument. I just play around with things you know and, and you know I, I don't practice enough so I'm kind of a lazy player so for me playing below my standard is actually you know <laughs> it's the best thing if I want to get some joy out of playing the only thing the only reason I can play you know I can play okay is um you know that 10,000 hours of practice thing you know to master something you you do it for 10,000 hours well after a while if you're a violin maker you you know you kind of get a bit older and you kind of find that that you've kind of played for a while um you know i i don't even know if i've gotten anywhere near my 10,000 hours but i just play for fun here and there so i'll accumulate a few hours a week you know and that adds up you know after a year you know say i say i accumulated like four hours a week you know after a year that's um 200 oh that's pathetic that's only 200 hours how many years would i have to do so after five years so 20 <laughs> so after five years that would be a thousand hours so <laughs> <laughs> so after 50 years so good good so um in my 70s in my 70s i think i'll get there <laughs> so watch this space <laughs> you gotta hang, hang in there I'm, I'm, i hope you guys are patient <laughs> but you know i like i said i play for fun you know i'm not going to become an orchestral per player um, I've done a little bit of performance just for fun with some friends. I kind of play in a, uh, we played in a bit of a jazz band and I play some other kind of music uh, and I just do that for fun. I've done some meditative music with another friend. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, one, one with a friend on the didgeridoo and that was really beautiful. Like we did like this really beautiful meditation piece. And uh, there was another one, uh, I was with another friend who plays a chakahachi. So we had the didgeridoo from Australia, chakahachi from um, 
Japan and the violin from Europe. So it was this really nice three continental mix, but it, it, it was really touching and it was a lot of fun. And again, I played below my standard uh, because I was able to play very slow and, uh, you know, contemplative music. Uh, and it just came from the heart. It was a lot of fun. So anyway, my final suggestion is just have fun playing. You know, just make it fun. Have fun. Enjoy it. Just play for fun. Um, you know, if you're stuck on a certain piece, you can practice that bit, you know. And, you know, if there's one little bit that just doesn't quite sound right, just, you know, practice that. But the rest of the time, have fun playing if you're stuck. You know, if you've got really high lofty goals, you know, and if you want to become a soloist, don't listen to me. You know, listen to people like Ray Chen and, uh, you know, uh, Maxim Vangorov, um, uh, Pinka Stukaman, Yehudi Menuhin, no longer alive, but, you know, there's some stuff. Um, Itzhak Perlman, you know, and some of those really good high-level players. But, you know, I play for fun. I enjoy it, you know. I'm a violin maker and my goal is to help you guys and uh, make beautiful instruments. What do you think of this instrument, by the way? Isn't it beautiful? Um, that's my new Hofmeister instrument. So I developed that with my makers and uh, I'm super happy. It's it's come out so beautiful. I've, I'm, I'm doing these to, uh, uh, to celebrate German violin making, especially early 1800s. Some of the Mittenvogt makers and things like that, they kind of had this kind of look. And uh, so that's what I was going for. And again, you know, they're just so beautifully made by my makers. Um, and then the final setup by me. Anyway, keep making beautiful music and I'll see you next time. All right, bye. Remember to subscribe, like, and all those things. The likes help me and the subscribes help you because that way you find out every time, and I mean every time, especially if you click the little bell, then you'll find out every time I post a new video. And as you know, <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> okay. I was gonna say something ridiculous. See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>